I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. What's up, world? Welcome to another edition of I Mix What I Like, imixwhatilike.org, and at I Mix What I Like for all your relevant social media. For me and for many of us, it's never too early to start looking at the tradition of Black August, and the month of August is a time to reflect, fast, reconnect, uh, revisit radical politics and traditions within the broader African liberation struggle, the Black liberation struggle here in the United States. Uh, and I and in this particular moment, as we were just sort of rapping, you know, before we got started here, I couldn't think of uh, uh, any better person to talk about this with than my next guest, who is Professor Sharice burden Stelly, who is a professor of Africana Studies and Political Science at Carleton College, who is uh, a prolific writer. And I invite you to check out, as we'll link to her uh, academia.edu page, where you can get a collection of her work, uh, and which centers on many of the issues that, uh, of course, we find appealing here, Black radicalism, internationalism. And in particular, we wanted to talk about today or start a conversation uh, today around the August 1949, uh, at least when it began, uh, Peak Skill Uprising, which featured, of course, the legendary Paul Robeson uh, and uh, an associated uh, uh, variety of, of folks involved in radical union, leftist, internationalist politics, and the response that some in this country felt was necessary to it. So... Dr. Burden Stelly, thank you for joining me. Good, mo good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Uh, and uh, again, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so this conversation, you know, as you know, came about because I think I tweeted something like, we don't talk about the peak scale rise enough right because in this moment where uh there was a lot of comparisons being made between like the george floyd brianna taylor uprisings mm -hmm. and the 1960s and of course in my mind i'm thinking about peak skill um because the work that i do looks at the convergences of like anti-communism and anti-radicalism and anti-blackness peak skill is like the sort of archetype of thinking through that convergence so you know, just to start, so the first of the two um, peak scale riots happened on August 27th, 1949. And as many of your listeners know, I'm sure August 27th is an auspicious date because that is when the August, the these March on Washington was in 1963 and the day that Du Bois died, right? So August 27th is this sort of um, interesting date in Black history in general. It's also my sister's birthday, but, you know. <laughs> Also very important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so what happened was um, the Harlem chapter of the Civil Rights Congress, um, I'll give a little bit of background on that organization in a minute, but essentially they were having a fundraising concert that featured Paul Robeson um, in Peekskill, New York. And so there was an organization called the People's Artists that has sponsored this event, right? And so they would sponsor these concerts with people like Paul Robeson, the radical Pete Seeger, all of these sort of artist revolutionaries. And essentially what happened was that a bunch of veterans organizations began to protest um, this fundraising concert, not least in response to some... Um, comments Paul Robeson had recently made at the World Peace Conference in which he was misconstrued as saying Black people would not fight on behalf of the United States against the Soviet Union. That's not exactly what he said, uh, but because of that, all of this anti-communist hysteria started being whipped up around him. So these veterans... I'm sorry, to interrupt, but he, he, I'm sorry to interrupt, but he was also misquoted as saying that Americans were like Hitler, uh, yeah. you know, all these other kinds of things that, that I think in a very propagandistic way were used to develop this anti-communist argument uh, in the press and elsewhere. And was this not... This these were not the comments that Jackie Robinson would later testify against Robeson at, at HUAC for, are they? Or, or am I? I'm, I'm, my timeline, I think, is off. But no, these are the comments. Okay. So these are these are the comments. Basically, you know, HUAC had rounded up these Negroes to go testify before to testify about Black people's patriotism after those remarks, of which Jackie Robinson was one. And of course, Paul Robeson, in his sort of expansive grace was like, you know, I'm not going to let the press put me up against Jackie Robinson. I think that his testimony was not useful, but I'm not going to sit here basically and drag Jackie Robinson because he 
ropes and understood the position that these black um, celebrities and these black leaders were being put in, in terms of proving black people's loyalty. The other thing I'll say just in passing is, oh, the irony about, you know, this hubbub about um, ropes and comparing the U.S. to Hitler, when that's exactly what the U.S. did vis-a-vis -vis the Soviet Union. They often conflated, they, they came up with this term authoritarianism to conflate fascism with um, communism when the Russians, you know, without the Russians, we wouldn't have won World War II. So how soon they forgot. But anyway. And then I'm sorry, right. but they also then, by to, <laughs> no, but to, uh, just to finish that logic, by today, they just rattle these names off as if they're all one and the same. They'll often say like a Hitler or a Lenin or a Hitler and a Stalin or a Hitler mm -hmm. and, or they'll compare, the, you know, Nazism to communism just thrown out in the press or, or in popular dialogue in general. Uh, just adding to 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 you know supplant uh, 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 supplementing uh, mm -hmm. the tradition or the the history you're talking about there. But I'm sorry, mm -hmm. please go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and just to put a five point on it, indeed, and in fact, many of these business leaders and politicians in the 1920s were enamored with Mussolini. They thought that Mussolini's approach, not least to curbing the spread of communism and to controlling labor unrest, was a good model for the U.S. So. <laughs> Um, here we are. Um, okay, so so Ropes in it goes to give this concert August 27th, 1949. A bunch of veterans organizations, they started a parade in opposition to the concert. They then proceeded to barricade the roads leading into the concert and then basically just start whooping ass. Pardon my language, but there was a, a vicious assault, right? Men, women, and children began to be beaten and they're yelling anti-Black, anti-Semitic, as well as, of course, anti-communist um, epithets at these concert attendees. Not far away, they also burned a five-foot cross on the mm -hmm. concert grounds, right? And so we see here the convergence of white supremacy and anti-radicalism and, of course, anti-Blackness and anti-Semitism. So not to be deterred, in defiance, 25,000 robes and supporters gathered the next Sunday, September 4th, um, to sort of to have the concert. So, you know, they, they refuse to be intimidated. They come back, they're attacked again. This time the attack didn't happen at the concert proper. The concert happened, but as people were leaving, um, their cars and buses were pelted with rocks and clubs. The windows were smashed and cars were overturned and over 200 people were injured. One person had their fingers severed. One person needed stitches in their, in their head. One person suffered like a massive concussion. And not only this, over 900 police officers were present participating in the mob attack, right? Not, so they were there to, you know, preserve quote unquote law and order. And their version of preserving law and order was to aid, abet, encourage, um, and participate in these attacks. So... As I said, this, this descent against Paul Robeson and all things black and radical had been sort of coming to a head after Robeson ostensibly made these comments about um, about the United about black people basically siding with the Soviet Union against the United States, and this attack is I, I can keep going if you want or you can if you have. Well, I, I mean, at, at one point, I want to at least I want to at least stop or or back up for a second to to talk a little bit about who Paul Robeson was, what mm -hmm. made him such the, the so-called lightning rod figure in this moment. In other words, why would 25,000 people have been willing to show up to hear him uh, or support him? Uh, and why would have so many been resistant to the message he was carrying or what he represented? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just so, so if, if you, I'm happy for us. I want us, in fact, to continue on with talking about what happened at Peak Skill, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, let's maybe pause for a minute and, and recenter uh, Robeson just briefly because not just because sure. of who he was individually, but all that he represented that was being attacked uh, literally and symbolically at this event. Mm -hmm. So, Paul Robeson was the closest thing I think we've had in real life to like a superhero. Just for real, right? He spoke 20 languages, football all-star, amazing baritone singer. Um, so, you know, Gerald Horn described him in the book as like a, the artist as revolutionary. Um, he was a, trained as a lawyer 
And he essentially, he's one of these people that really committed class suicide, as we call it, right? He could have gone on to be a millionaire um, in, you know, in, in those times, but chose to use his platform for Black liberation, for peace, anti-imperialism, anti-colonialism, um, and just for this idea of peaceful coexistence. And so I, the main thing about Paul Robeson that I think garnered the ire of the state is his courage, right? He stood up for all of the people that the United States hates, Black people, communists, workers, right? Women, all of the oppressed people, those were his people. And so he was constantly being red baited. He was constantly being hounded about whether or not he was a member of the communist party. But as he noted over and over, it's like, y'all don't really give a fuck about that. Y'all are mad because I'm struggling on behalf of my people. Y'all are mad because I'm arguing against war, which is the basis for, you know, U.S. accumulation um, after its rise to hegemony, after the First World War, et cetera, et cetera. And so he's saying, like, you're using communism as basically like a, a metonym for anything that's progressive. Mm-hmm. Um, the Real other- quick, when I've, 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 I've argued before, and check me on this, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't he the first actual global superstar wasn't he, if not, and not just black, I mean, of, of any background, I mean, or uh, in terms of like the kind of celebrity we talk about today, mm-hmm. um, because he was a Hollywood movie star uh, mm-hmm. uh, at mm-hmm. the height of his career. I mean, he was, you know, making $100,000 a picture in 1930, you know, yep. in the 30s, which is just insane. Uh, and then he refused to play, you know, you know, backwards, black, anti-black caricatures he, he walked away he, he, as you talked about he but he but he was all over the world speaking all these languages I, I don't know it, it just it, it, so it was also as you started our conversation this he represented what we see a lot today this nexus of of, of activism celebrity uh, 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 and why I've argued you can never be rich famous and radically political all at the same time because you know yeah uh, but anyway uh, please continue or respond or add or to anything I just said there. Yeah, I think that you're absolutely right in terms of him being um, being sort of what we now will understand as like a superstar. The first probably really um, visible and sustainable superstar. In terms of the problematic character, I think the problematic characters, I think he came to that position, but there was... I, early on, I think there was a few sort of roles that he took on, and he was critiqued he for them by people Absolutely. like the boys. Mm-hmm. But but he had the sort of self criticism to cease to do that. Um, so he had the the ethics to to move away from those roles. Um, so the other thing about Paul Robeson is that he's deeply sort of ensconced in the people and organizations and an institution building. So again, he's not, he is not about like clout. He's about building solidarity. So he was in so many organizations, just to name a few, like the National Negro Congress, the Council on African Affairs, which he helped to found, um, to found with Max Jurgen, who I hate, but was cool at that time, <laughs> um, the Civil Rights Congress and many other organizations. And so he was constantly using his name and his prestige to try to help ordinary people. Um, The other thing that I'll say that Paul Robeson conveys is that he's an example of how the state will harass, punish, and financially terrorize, to your point, people who are famous, are wealthy, and then have the audacity to be radical or to have some sort of political consciousness as well. And then part of what Gerald Horn argues is that the punishment of people like Paul Robeson and Du Bois, Carla Bass, um, uh, Vicki Garvin, and other sort of artists like Lorraine Hansberry even, is that- Hazel Scott, Canada Lee, I mean, yeah. Yes, Ali Harrington, like Mm -hmm. all these people, the punishing of those uh, those artists, revolutionaries, really narrow civil rights, their civil rights struggle. So this is why we think civil rights started in 1954, mm. when we could go all the way back to 1931 with Scottsboro, right? Mm. We could also go back to 1951. We charged genocide, but all of those left-wing radical civil rights demands become disciplined out with people like Paul Robeson. Mm. So then we have this sort of 
very narrow understanding of civil rights, whereby, you know, a, a joke is people were agitating to eat at um, places they couldn't afford to eat, right? So they're ag- agitating for access, but they got no dough. So because the, re- the, the demand for redistribution falls out of that um, struggle, because of the disciplining of internationalism, of anti-imperialism, and of anti-capitalism. So, so I think that Paul Robeson is a lesson in that as well. So I, I don't want to rush ahead because I think what you, what you just said there would indeed be a great segue to something I, I do want us to talk about. The idea, you know, in terms of where we are now in response to this crisis, the ongoing worsening conditions even before this crisis, uh, for me, the crisis of, of, of punditry, media, and organization uh, 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 in areas in which, to, to, uh, as you describe, um, redistributionist ideas have been disciplined out of the conversation. Um, uh, and a lot of celebrity without this kind of background are promoted or encouraged to take, to take uh, I think, undue... Uh, <laughs> Uh, position, credit, cr- glory. Or credit, mm-hmm. glory, position, and in, 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 mm-hmm. in, in, in spokes, being the spokespeople for all this. Uh, so I definitely want us to talk about all that, and feel free to take us there now if you like. But I, but I want to make sure that that anything remaining about the specifics of peak skill, because after you've 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 nicely laid out for us, Robeson, mm-hmm. um, that's in part his brilliance, his 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 his. Uh, um, um, his physical presence even is, mm-hmm. is attractive and brings a lot of people to, to his face. And then of course he uses that to, to promote ideas that, that nobody in power wants. Uh, and a lot of people without power, particularly those doing the attacking that day uh, are encouraged to, to also not want, uh, even if it mm-hmm. might benefit mm-hmm. them. Uh, um, anyway, so I, I've, I've gone off course here a little bit, but I just, you know, please say anything else you'd like to about Robeson and Peak Skill, and then mm-hmm. uh, uh, feel free also to begin that segue to, to where we are now and how what mm-hmm. happened then has negatively, at least my bias would describe it, impacted our response now. Sure. So a few more things about Peak Skill is that, all right, so this all happens August 27th, September 4th. Instead of defending um, the civil rights of the largely like left wing crown that had gathered, the governor, who's at this time Thomas Dewey, blamed the violence and lawlessness on the victim. That is to say, he called it a, a, a result of a communist plot, right? So he red baits this whole thing and evades responsibility for protecting the civil rights. So what happens? The Council on African Affairs, of which Paul Robeson is on the sort of executive council at this time, he, along with Du Bois, Althea Thompson, another, another hero, right? Louise Thompson Patterson um, and Estelle Osborne, they submitted a letter to President Harry Truman. They were like, this is unacceptable. So the letter starts, right? A criminal assault was made against the American people and their rights at Peekskill, New York, on the night of August 27, 1949. The criminal attack was repeated a week later on Sunday, September 4th, in the same locality. And so essentially, so that move is just very interesting, right? Because what they're saying is that this attack on people that you're deeming disposable is actually an attack on the American people. This is, this, and this attack is a slippery slope to have everybody's rights curtailed, which ultimately starts to happen with pa- the passage of things like the McCarran Act, um, et cetera. And so essentially they said that Governor Dewey failed to, um, to perform his responsibility, so he should be removed from office. They demanded an investigation from the Attorney General and the Civil Rights Department um, into peak skill and prosecution of those who had been involved in the attack. Um, they also linked this attack uh, to earlier attacks on Robeson to the spate of lynchings that have spiked since the end of World War II, and to police brutality um, cases that have happened in New York, for which nobody had been held accountable. So again, and even Robeson, when he's talking about peace scale later on, he's like, this is not just an attack on me, right? This is an attack on Black people, this is an attack on radicals, and, this is, and by extension, this is an attack on um, American people in general. And so they, another line that they write that I'll just read is that peace scale demonstrated 
what this mounting anti-Negro violence and contempt for human rights may develop into unless speedily checked. Peacekill was a reminder of Hitlerite Germany where fascism got its start with organized mob assaults with official sanction against the Jewish people in the name of German patriotism and anti-communism, right? So again, they're like, hey, this is actually a harbinger for fascism. And so, of course, this this letter to uh, to President um, Truman is signed by people like Carlotta Bass, Thelma Dale, Earl B. Dickerson, <clears throat> who was one of the people who, who wrote a chapter for um, the United Nations appeal um, and appeal to the world that Du Bois edited. Um, Ollie Harrington, who we mentioned, William Patterson, who goes on to charge the United States with genocide, Mary Church Terrell. Anyway, Mary Church Terrell, <laughs> and, then Doxy, <laughs> and then Doxy Wilkerson, um, who is amazing, who's actually, I'm going to write my second book about him, but about Mary Church Terrell, I feel like the way that she's been taken up, people like de-radicalize her. What I, all, you know, people will say whatever they want about her respectability or whatever, but Mary Church Terrell never turned her back on Du Bois, on Robeson, mm-hmm. on the CRC, on any of the, so like, on any of any of the radical causes that she lent her name to, she herself, along with even Mary McLeod Bethune, uh, Bethune were red baited. Some people flipped because of that. She never did. And so I feel like we don't know about that, but it goes to the sort of intellectual McCarthyism that's endemic in um, the academy, even black studies, <laughs> where we don't we we just sanitize people's um, people's narratives or read them into particular epistemologies to erase the fact that they had these radical commitments. So, um, I think you raised was, a good point. I, 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 again, forgive the interruption, but I, I do think it's important to note that that the so-called big L capital L left politics that that have uh, that black people have engaged all over the world have been um, dealt with unfairly even with, certainly mm-hmm. within the academy and certainly within even Africana black studies uh, and definitely among those who are most prominent spokespeople uh, about those subjects. The, the, this, these traditions have almost been entirely erased um, and it's, it's a little frustrating. For all the talk of Du Bois, I mean, I'm constantly upset that everybody just mentions souls of black folk and act like he didn't say anything other than double consciousness for the next 60 years that he was writing. Uh, and none of his left politics seemed to, to get the, the, the prominent conversation that that double consciousness concept got uh, uh, from 1903. But anyway, I... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Black Reconstruction is sort of making a reappearance, but people act like he never wrote, you know, um, um, in Battle for Peace. Mm. which is actually his most radical mm. work. That's where he really lays out the, the comprehensive plan. Yeah, because it's like, it's like Interesting. people be left adjacent, but like <laughs> we have these, these texts that like black Marxism or black reconstruction that people will parrot for their leftist, bona, you know, their bona fides. But I mean, people should believe whatever they want. But anyway, <laughs> uh, in Battle for Peace, Everybody should read that one. Absolutely. And I, I think <laughs> Black Reconstruction, to, uh, to, to your point, maybe getting more uh, attention now than, than previously. But, uh, but even the world in Africa doesn't get enough attention. I mean, right. there's a lot of, lot of, anyway. But Yeah, yeah. Uh, we agree. And, and we agree. We agree on that for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so anyway, you know, but, but, uh, if, if there's not something else you wanted to add about peak skill, because I don't want to give that short shrift as much as I, I admit I'm, I have this, this, I don't know, it's like an anxiousness almost to get to, mm-hmm. to, to make this connection. But I, yeah. uh, because so much of, uh, you know, and I'll just start, well, I'll restart with this by saying that, that one of the biggest issues I see right now is not the problems of the world being discussed in, uh, you know, quote unquote, popular discourse, but it's the way they're being discussed. It's the, the, the interpretation of the issues mm-hmm. and the responses and the histories that is, uh, you know, getting the most uh, um, uh, propagandistic uh, development and propulsion right now. So, uh, and one of the, mm-hmm. the, the issues for me is that the, the, so much of what you focus on in your work this whole internationalism and radi- left radicalism, engagement with communism and socialism, et cetera, the, the labor and histories, all of that is not, I think, getting enough conversation or, or inclusion 
as people consider what kinds of responses we should be advocating for right now. So in this moment of, of crisis, of, of insecurity, in, in uh, anxiety, there is for me, and I think some of us, uh, 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 a hopefulness that in this moment, some new ideas or some new or, or some rebranding of old ideas or some new improvement or, or, or re, you know, mm-hmm. some new presentation of old ideas could get <clears throat> some run and would be even maybe fall on a better ear at this moment, given all that people are suffering and all that people are seeing are mm-hmm. going on. Um, mm-hmm. And what do you think about any of that? I mean, I think that you're absolutely right. I just think this ashy ass race versus class debate, it is so tired. <laughs> to use a, a phrase of Peter Hudson, it is blanched and desiccated. Like, mm. it's both. It's both, okay? We, like, and this, there is, I'm sorry, there is no radicalism that is not anti capitalist, period. Mm-hmm. It's not, capitalism not gonna free us. As your book attests, I think poignantly, this whole idea of, you know, Black entrepreneurship as the basis to Black freedom, it's a no, right? I mean, the closest model that we have to that is Du Bois's Black cooperative independent economy of the 1930s that he theorizes. This is a cooperative economy. It is producers' cooperatives. It is consumers' cooperatives. It is workers' cooperatives. And that is in the context of entrenched and endemic anti-blackness one might say we're still or we are um we we're in that (laughs) we're in that moment but in a different way to be sure but i i agree anti-capitalism and not just the aesthetics of such but like actual anti-capitalism i think needs to be put on the table which means that we have to be able to envision and imagine what that looks like And in my estimation, I think that that's happening in very sort of quotidian ways. When we think about something like mutual aid, um, that is a sort of a a very small envisioning of what a sort of economy could look like. The problem with mutual aid is that when there's not broader structural transformation, what that means is that people, ordinary people are absorbing the hollowing out of the state that is to say people are having to shoulder the burden of the state not doing what it needs to do for people with our taxpayer money like we're paying for this shit like you're not giving us nothing we're paying this right um and i think (laughs) what's very confusing especially for the, the the negro problem is that one can be uh a race radical but have no economic politics. That is to say, can be sort of deeply, um, that sort of quote unquote race radicalism can be compatible with neoliberalization. And that can be very confusing. And that can be, and you have to be aware of that. This is what allows for the race hustling, the pimping of the moment, the spokespeople that I didn't nominate, nobody asked me, I didn't get my ballot. Maybe it's still in the mail and the USPS is being defunded. So maybe I just didn't get my ballot yet, but nobody asked me about these quote unquote leaders. And so I think that's the situation that we're in. And to your point, as more and more people have no jobs and have you know, increasingly no livelihoods, perhaps it's, it's more possible to imagine something beyond like neoliberal capitalism. You know, in 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 the run up to our discussion today, uh, and I don't want to be unfair to to Ti mm-hmm. or any other current celebrity, but I did happen to watch his conversation the other day with uh, 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 Roland Martin, uh, which to me encapsulated a lot of the problems that we're trying to address here. Uh, where the conversation was, they had a conversation about what Ti thought our collective response should be, and that he had developed a platform. Uh, admittedly working with some others, but but the platform involves, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, reparations from Lloyd's of London, uh, you know, 10% of, of that company going to Black America, uh, and, and also involved um, million dollar loans to all Black Americans uh, that would be paid back at 1% interest used one time for anything that 
black people here would want. Uh, and um, involves input from the billion, the black billionaire Robert Smith, uh, in in terms of develop, helping develop entrepreneurial and black business, etc. Again, I don't want to put, I don't want to make this about Ti, but what what my response was, especially in the preparation for for our conversation, where Paul Robeson and and, and international politics, etc., are the are the the, the context. <laughs> And I was thinking this is exactly why Paul Robeson had to have been removed and, and, and to your point, had to be disciplined out of celebrity and, and uh, uh, popular conversation. Uh, because T.I., even though I know he just left a meeting with former original Black Panther Party members, including Daruba bin Wahad, uh, I didn't hear any of their involvement with his plan. And the plan goes back to leaning on uh, 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 you know, with all this praise to a black billionaire and Robert Smith and, and a business plan and entrepreneurialism uh, and, and loans and, you know, being part of Lloyd's of London. And I just kept thinking, I don't hear redistribution. I don't hear a, a challenge to the way wealth is created. Never mind any questions I might have tactically about why Lloyds of London, a very internationalist, African enslaving and benefiting colonial company would want to praise or, or prize only black America with 10% uh, and set a precedent where all the other parts of the diaspora could get their 10% and, and therefore wipe out the company. But it just reminded me that Paul Robeson represents a tradition that we're not talking about that, that is, is so easily excluded from this moment. Um, I, I I, I hope that wasn't a non sequitur of sorts, but I, I, I leave that for you to, to, to respond to in any way uh, mm -hmm. or, or not. <laughs> <You know. clears throat> it's so interesting to me that all of these plans for Black America that don't involve Black Americans or Black people in general having slaves or colonies or empires, people think that shit is viable. So mm -hmm. that is to say that the way in which rich places became rich and rich people became rich is not through hard work. It's not through getting 10% of anything. They had slaves, black racialized slaves. And even before that, they enslaved some of everybody. They had colonies, then neo colonies and empire. So until that's part of the plan, it ain't happening. It, it is not happening. That, that's the whole discourse of modernization and development. Why didn't it happen? Because colonies turned into neo-colonies and because America and Britain and France wasn't talking about, come colonize us for a little bit and you take some of our shit and therefore you could catch up to us, right? Nah, they were saying act right, adopt the right attitude, liberalize your economy, open up to trade defend you know defend capital against your population that was a solution so it's not gonna happen right i <clears throat> what i will say is that i think that there are some plans whereby black people can be made to be more better off mm -hmm. but fascism also includes a plan for the most downtrodden to be better off mm -hmm. it's part of the fascist plan but at what cost Listen, mm. I, I don't have no solutions. I'm still trying to understand the problem, okay? So don't ask me. I don't know. But, um, and I do think that to some extent, like, we are messed up out here. We need all hands on deck. But we need to stop going to celebrities for our politics and for our solutions. They don't come to us for their dance moves or their rap lyrics. Why are we <laughs> going to them for their politics? I don't get that. I'm going to Robeson, okay? Even if people say, well, Danny Glover, fine. I'll go to 1968, 1969, Black Studies Danny Glover, but, like, I'm not going to, like, <laughs> what was the police academy Danny Glover? Why? You know, so I just, I mean, but <clears throat> if I'm being gracious, I do think that it's good that people with means are thinking about solutions, right? And not just, you know, drinking their water and minding their business. But sometimes that can be detrimental in the long run if those are the people we're electing to figure this shit out. Um, because a quote from Paul Robeson actually is that, you know, unfortunately the, the case of black people has been that 
our leaders have been selected for us historically. And it's really only black people that need, that need leaders, right? We ain't talk, who's, who are the white leaders? Who are the leaders of the white people? No, they don't, they're just, they're just individuals. They're just people. It's only black people that need to be led. That is to say managed, that is to say dictated to, right? It's only the black masses. And so um, I'm interested in like people like no name, right? So um, she's this artist that has been studying and I think that that's so important, right? That studying and thinking and making mistakes and, and you know, asking about what's possible, that to me is a good approach for celebrities or for people with means and influence. It's like, let's read some shit. And this is why I sort of score towards a last question that you can take wherever you like. But, but for me, at least the last question um, involves this sort of, what was... Robeson and his comrades, you know, what were Robeson and his comrades advocating that we might update for today or, or that we might see is missing from the conversation today? Or what broadly, even more broadly speaking, from the labor movement or those struggles, could we be updating or the re- we charge genocide uh, mm-hmm. um, concept, which, which, which uh, uh, I know others are doing some work around right now uh, as well. But Anyway, what what from the the traditions that you've talked about that you're fo- you focused on? You know, obviously, you as you said, you don't have a solution. But what might we all draw from and and try to update or implement now? Do you think? You mean besides socialism? <laughs> I mean that. I mean it's a very simple answer. Like these are socialists. Period. Right? They run the gamut. Some are like you know, quote unquote, Stalinist. Some are Maoist. Some are like three are trots. I'm just kidding. Um, there are three, you know, there's a few trots, Trotsky, or, or let us say Jamesians, right? There are people who bang with Fidel or Cabral or Ho Chi Minh, right? Because there's a moment in which like the idea of socialism moves to the global South fundamentally. I think Carol Cruz writes correctly about this. Um, um, you know, Harold Cruz has a lot of good things to say, notwithstanding not some of the things he has to say, but he, he um, was not a fan of Robeson, and that was an issue. Uh, and something Kevin Gaines wrote about in the 80s or 90s, he raised mm-hmm. something I've not seen discussed enough that Harold Cruz, his, his crisis of Negro intellectual, got a lot of support from the State Department here and abroad because specifically it attacked black internationalists like Robeson and John Henry Clark. Uh, um, so, what I think he got right, he I, I, I feel I well, I have to disagree on some things, being a, a, a Clarkian of sorts and certainly mm-hmm. a Robeson supporter. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, anyway, I, I, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He's, you know, I think that um, Hero, we got a lot of complicated figures yes. in our, in our, um, there's many I can name, but I won't because I'm not trying to. Um, <laughs> In flame, but like there's, but what I will say is that what what this attests to though is that black people are black people, even black radicals are heterogeneous. That and and this is hard, and the systematic, continued, and very, um, you know, uh, intense state repression is real. And despite all of that, look at everything that got done, even if it was like broken piecemeal underfunded like that state repression goes back to at least 1919 right as we know J. Edgar, J. Edgar, J. Edgar Hoover becomes J. Edgar Hoover through his deportation of Garvey not even to mention the Palmer raids right so through all of that repression all of that state violence we still got some shit done and of course we're going to disagree because this is literally a matter of like life and death and i think that we underestimate that um <clears throat> the other thing that i'll say like i've said before that i'll say about robeson is that it's not just that he hated white supremacy and capitalism he actually loved black people and that's what we need to get we can't just hate imperialism and colonialism and capitalism we have to actually like love black people ordinary regular degular black people and just and just working people more broadly, right? Um, so, for example, it's one thing to record like police beating people up because we need to have that documentation. It's another thing to stop those actions, right? 
so and again that's not a that's not a critique because people are or it is a critique but it's not a I'm not dragging anybody because everybody's going to do what they can do but I think that we need to what's the other what's the other side to the anti so we're anti-imperialist so we're pro what right we're anti colonialist so we're we're pro what we're anti-sexist so we're pro what and that's so hard to think about I actually did that exercise with my students and it was so hard for them to think of the the positive right it's very hard to think of the not or the anti or the thing you're against but say okay so then what are you for because whatever it is that you're for is going to be the basis of what comes next um and again it's hard right you know i did a version of that with my students where it sounds like a ver- where I asked where I would where I ask every semester what what do you want the, you know what do you want this world to be or something vague like that what do you want mm-hmm. out of this experience what do you and I've just noticed over the years how it seems like more and more all of the responses uh, become individual mm-hmm. you know, we don't even to Fanon's point we don't even dream big anymore we don't dream of you know big fantasy new world it's like I, well, I hope to get a good job and have a nice house and you know my we've been so beaten down that we've forced almost to think about our fantasies are even just a, 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 a you know like a, a next step improvement for us individually uh i don't anyway it sounds similar to what, yeah. what you were doing and it, it, it anyway i'm sorry keep going please keep going. no is that is then that's why you know that's the colonization of the mind piece and mm. this is where baba clark is like so this is this is and this is just like we need to reconcile race and class we got to rec- reconcile idealism and materialism mm. and this is where actually the boys is the archetype of that because mm. Materialism is important. I am, I am, you know, a Rodneyist, which is shorthand for like some type of ecumenical black Marxist, revolutionary <laughs> nationalist, pan-Africanist, whatever, right? But ideas do matter. Like you have to be able to imagine. And I think colonization of, of the mind is important. This is why for all of my disagreements with aspects of Afrocentricity, that's how I came to consciousness. And I'll always be indebted to that, even as they keep on red baiting me, fine. But like, because that, that, you know, that, is how you undo, it at least gives you an alternative, right? And so people could say whatever they want, for example, about Frances Cress Welding, or Frances Cress Welsing. You know, she ain't no crazier than Freud and all the crazy shit he was saying, except <laughs> he becomes the foundation of psychoanalysis. Like, you know what I mean? And so all of that to say that we need those people to, for the otherwise, to think otherwise. And that's why I think um, the studying is important, right? That's why I think that you, the what is the sort of action, very important, but the so what is also very important because without a sort of upshot, without knowing why it is that you're doing particular things, those actions can be you harnessed to nefarious ends, right? Um, populism, <laughs> but you know, fascism, like those are broad-based, math-based movements too, right of the people so um and of course I'm, and i'm sure you know everybody that's listening to, the, to this knows all these things i'm simply preaching to the choir but um to to your to make a short story long to your original question you know i think that <clears throat> what robeson, robeson and his sort of squad or cadre offered was basically um you know walter rodney has this quote like people's power no dictatorship and I really think that they believe that. Like even Du Bois with his his talented 10th or Vanguardism or whatever, that was about responsibility, mm-hmm. right? People misunderstand talented 10th. That was about responsibility. And I think these people who committed class suicides, the people like Esther Cooper Jackson or Louis Burnham, et cetera, et cetera, they understood their responsibility to use their relative prestige or um, access, privilege, whatever for people. Um, and I think that is where we need to start. So to your point about your students who can imagine a good job, okay, so what does it mean for everybody to have a good job? What does it mean for everybody to have a home, right? What does it mean for us to stop scorning houselessness as if it's a moral or individual failure? And so I think that even those individual dreams 
become like, like, you know, to use Robin Kelly's term, freedom dreams, when they could, when they're scaled out and it's not just you and you buying your mama a house and getting your cousins and them, whatever, it's for everybody. Um, and we might, we're at a point where like, that's where we need to be going because the state's not going to do it. If COVID-19 has revealed anything, they're going to be like, figure it out, wear your mask or don't, you know, stay home or don't go to school or don't like this. They just, it's up to, you know, it's up to like localized collectives of people like thinking together. So that's where I think we're at. <clears throat> well, well, I w- what I was going to say is, you know, but they, they are very clear in what, what they, what they're clear in not leaving to us is room to have these kinds of conversations in any mm-hmm. kind of mainstream mm-hmm. platform. I mean, this is ultimately why I think Nick Cannon was attacked. I obviously don't, you know, I don't think anybody has an overbearing concern for Jews or what is or is not said about Jews. I think the real question is we don't want to sanction any unsanctioned conversations publicly or or broadly, you know, disseminated. Um, uh, uh, Whatever critiques anyone might have about what he said, I think the the backlash is more about that than anything that was or was not said. Uh, Same thing that I think, though, very different politics, very different contexts, the same thing in a way that was done to Robeson. Uh, mm-hmm. um, overemphasizing something, misconstruing construing something else, picking on that for the purpose of attacking what potentially could be more uh, threatening ideas or politics or conversations. Um, mm-hmm. And then ultimately, I think that those in power are quite clear in saying from their perspective, we are not going to let them determine how the wealth that they help create is distributed. So that's why they will say to your point, go to school or not, wear a mask or not, go, mm-hmm. go do, you know, but when it comes to the redistribution of the wealth you have helped us create, uh, we're only going to maybe give you a few pennies. We're going to definitely redistribute a, a, a newly created sum to the rest of the, the top 1%. Uh, and we're certainly not going to, to, to you know, advocate some of the even more uh, redistributive policies we see happening in parts of Europe, etc. cetera. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so again, for me, that's another reason why we have to have these conversations and be reminded of some of these traditions and, and, and politics and histories. And I, and I greatly appreciate you for your work, uh, which is a, a clear and consistent reminder of all of these traditions. And I really greatly appreciate you coming on. And I can't wait for us to have you back next month where we will talk about what, what should be added to George Jackson's book list. I want to that as a <laughs> yes. teaser for part two because yes. I will have I, we, I'm going to almost maybe immediately after this try to schedule you for for uh, that conversation because that was something that our comrade Tonda Seasway Chimaranga inspired and started mm-hmm. with us so I want us to maybe we'll have all three of us have that conversation that'd be a good one anyway so anyway yes. Dr. Sharice Bird and Steli thank you for joining me here at I Mix What I Like I greatly appreciate your time and your work thank you thank you so much for having me I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.